We started work on this project in October when we dug the foundations and started on the bricklaying. Two months were wiped out due to illness, Christmas and a family bereavement. We've had storms, material shortages, trades problems, window delays, hyperinflation due to the world shutting down for almost two years and it's now looking increasingly likely that there's a global recession on the horizon. It's really not been the best time to tackle a project like this. The renovation work will continue for some time yet, but this particular building project really concludes with one event, and that is final inspection from building control. So today's the day folks, we are literally waiting for the building inspector to turn up and either give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down on all the work that we've done. And the one thing, the one piece of paper that we need from this is our building regulations completion certificate because without that you can't sell your house. We have no plans of moving anytime soon but it is the final stage of a building project like this. You've got to get your certificate of completion. Otherwise, if you ever want to sell your house, you're gonna run into some quite significant problems. So there's a number of things that we've had to sort behind the scenes to get everything ready for today. I'll take you through the full list of what he actually 
wanted to look at once he's been and then I can share that information with you. But there's certain things that they asked to see on the final inspection so we've made sure that that's all ready. For example, they wanted the extraction in the kitchen all set up and they also wanted to see a functional sink so that they can see the drainage all working. So that means we've had to move the temporary sink out of what will become the pantry into here just to hook everything up. It's all working and, and everything, hot and cold water and all the drainage is working because that had to be all ready and plumbed in for the building inspector coming and fingers crossed if everything's signed off then we can move this back out into our temporary kitchen because you talk about your working triangle in kitchens well I can tell you it's a royal pain in the neck having your sink in an entirely different room. Hopefully we'll get a video out all about installing the kitchen doing the flooring and all that sort of thing so do subscribe if you want to see that but obviously we don't want to start on any of that work until the main structure of the build has been signed off just in case there's any problems I don't want to jinx it and effectively we're now at the stage where where if a builder had done the work for us, the builder would be handing the project over to us for us to do all of the internal fit outs. So it's kind of a neat line that we're drawing under it and the building reg sign off is that neat line. Obviously, since we've managed this build ourselves, the book stops with us. And although we've been in regular contact with building control throughout the entire project, I'm still a bit nervous, you know, there could easily be stuff that we've forgotten about or we've missed off. Even the most experienced builders can get caught out by the building inspector. One of the nice things again though, since we are managing the project ourselves, is that when we've got a little lull like this when we're waiting on someone to turn up, we can put that little bit of extra attention and uh, little details like just cleaning up the brickwork and just making sure everything is spit and span ready for the inspection because we want the place to look as good as it can possibly be because that's really the last time the building inspector will ever see the property. Was that the door? I'll be back in a minute. He's here, I need to go. Wish us luck, I'll be back in a minute. Oh, I can't believe he hasn't signed it off. I'm only joking. Check it out. We are done. Look, 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 look. There we go. Building regs, sign off, done. No problems at all, passed with flying colours. And to be honest, they're a really good bunch over at the council. And if we were gonna have a problem, we would have known by now. It would be very unusual to get to this stage in a build and discover something critical that you'd missed because they've done all the periodic inspections. So this was just really a, a final check of things. But man, I am so happy with this single piece of paper. We can sell our house if we wanted to, as I say, we're not selling. We're going to be here for a good while yet. But yeah, if you're doing a building project like this, this is the key bit of paper that you need once you're done. Otherwise, you're going to run into major problems down the line. Anyway, I'll quickly take you through some of the things that he did specifically look at and ask for in the final inspection because it might be useful for your project. Do bear in mind that every building inspector is different. They're all going to have their kind of favourite things that they like to check up on, but it'll give you a fair idea of what's involved in the final inspection process. It doesn't last very long, so don't panic too much. So in the garage, first of all, and we actually have lights in here now so you can actually see what's happening. But the main things he wanted to have a look at in here was the open vent for the soil stack, which is, I don't know if you can see that pipe going up there. And he also wanted to check for the pipe collars as well, the intermessent pipe collars. A couple of people said, like, how does that work? Well, I'm assuming in the event of a fire, the collar swells up and fills the entire gap. So in other words, the pipe presumably would melt away and then the intermessent collar would fill up the entire gap. I have no idea. 
He checked that we've got a fire door with the self closer on and that that's all functioning as it should. Briefly mentioned earlier, but you want to see that we've got the extraction all working in the kitchen, which obviously we do. And as I say, he wanted to see a functioning sink just so that we could check that all the drainage was working. We can now get this moved out of here back into the temporary kitchen so that we can get the new flooring installed in here. He checked we've got extraction in the bathroom with our shiny walls. He also double checked that we've got fire escape windows in our bedroom. And he wanted verification and proof that the tiles, the roof tiles used for the rear extension were suitable for the pitch of the roof, which they are. This roof, by the way, it's a 16 degree pitch and these tiles are designed for use down to 15 degrees, which was all good. And then other stuff that they might ask for as well are things like your Part P and electrical test certificates for all of the electric work that you've had done. Fencer certificates for the windows they might ask for. Any gas work that you have done they might ask for some proof that it's been done by a gas safe engineer. And then also if you get anything like a wood burning stove put in then that might require HETAS certification as well. There's probably other stuff that I've not mentioned, but that's kind of the stuff that sprung to mind that Building Regs specifically looked at. And there's probably a lot of other stuff that they've looked at without me even kind of realizing because they do this many times every single day and they'll know straight away if something kind of jumps out at them and whether or not it requires further investigation. But thankfully with this, everything was pretty straightforward. And as I say, we've now got that magic completion certificate, which means that if we do ever want to move house, then we've got this ready to hand over to the solicitors. What we do is we keep all of this sort of paperwork in a single file, so all of the fencer information, all of the Part P and electrical testing information, all of the building regs sign off, the HETAS certificates, everything we just put in, into a single file so it's all in one place. And that way it's easy to find and in 10 years time if you come to sell your house, you're not hunting around for scraps of paper or emails from uh, different companies who have signed things off. You can vaguely see our current to-do list and I was going to make a separate video all about workload management on a project like this but I'll very quickly explain it in a nutshell how we tend to manage a project like this. When we first move into the property we just get on with it. There's too many jobs to list. We, we kind of have a high level idea of what needs doing but invariably until you actually get stuck into it and start ripping stuff to bits you're going to end up unearthing more jobs than your initial list would uh, even cater anyway. So we tend to just get stuck into it. And then from that point, we move to whiteboard lists. Whiteboard lists I find work really, really well. And I like just crossing stuff off when a job is done. When we were into the main build where we were relying more on tradespeople arriving at specific times and we were coordinating a lot of different resources, different deliveries, all that sort of stuff. At that point, I tended to revert to spreadsheets and used spreadsheets to manage everything. And now that all the core build is done, all of the tradespeople are more or less finished, we revert back to a whiteboard list. And, and this just works really well for little jobs because every day we're trying to maybe tick off at least five or six smaller jobs. So for example, today I wanna to get the sink moved back out of this room and into our temporary kitchen, but I can't do that until I've finished doing this video. I want to do some caulking and fillering around the fire door, general fillering in the garage. I might make a start on shelving so we can get the workshop moved into the garage, some trims and whatnot. So that gets like a few jobs out the road. At the moment, I'm actually waiting on grout to dry in the ensuite, so I can't really get on with uh, fitting the shower and doing silicon and stuff like that until the grout's all dried. So once that's done tomorrow I'll be ploughing on with a lot of jobs on, on this side because next week the carpets arrive for the bedroom so we've got to get the bedroom completely finished. It more or less is. So folks that's us done on this project and this will be the last video I'll be making on this channel. I'm only joking. We've got loads of stuff coming up. We've got a video coming very soon about completely regrading the back garden which we're just waiting on the grass to grow a bit more. On the subject of gardens we've got a video coming up all about what we've done to this for about a year and a half down the line or we'll say a year down the line because it sounds better. We've got an awful lot of engineered oak flooring to fit. There'll be a video about that. Obviously we've got a kitchen to fit. 
over there. Test Tuesday will be making a return. We've got loads of videos about tools coming up. And of course, we've got the studio room to finish. Oh, and I'll let you know how much all of this cost. That's comfy. Thanks as always to everyone on the member zone. You are literally keeping the lights on on this channel and it's what allows me to keep this channel sponsorship free and just continue to make independent videos. If you do want to join, head over to members.cosforthandyman.com. It's only a couple of quid and it gives you access to a whole load of extra content with no adverts and it's all sorts of extra stuff that you won't see on YouTube. Great though YouTube is, unfortunately there's certain types of content that just doesn't work on YouTube. It's just a little bit too niche, so the member zone works really well for that. Also, don't forget if you want any more specific information about this extension project, head over to selfbuildextension.co.uk. There's a lot of extra detail on there that, as I say, it's probably a little bit too boring for YouTube, but if you are embarking on a journey like this, hopefully you'll find it of some use. We're gonna draw a line under this series for now and kind of get back to business as usual. There's a whole load of stuff that we've been wanting to get filmed that is kind of separate from the extension project, but we wanted to draw a line under this section of the channel first. If you could do a massive favor for me and Mrs. Mac and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and then you'll not miss out on any of the new awesome videos that are coming your way very, very soon. I'm not entirely what order they're gonna come out in. It might be the lawn video, or it could be the workshop video. Who knows, it'll be a surprise for both of us. Anyway, for now, we'll leave it there. Take care, folks, we shall see you next time. Tatty bye. Ow.